I made it to the 90 mile straight. This Australia is big and empty. All right, just left Widji Molfa after two days of editing. It feels really good to get back on the unicycle. Yeah, that's how long it took to get that video out. Uh, maybe I'm slow, I don't know, but I like to, I like to make good stuff. Anyway, uh, before I really start this episode, I just want to thank somebody. So I was, I was outside the Widji Tavern this morning, just eating my porridge and just checking my emails. I got an email from PayPal. So I open up the email and I see that it's a donation from somebody for 500 pounds uh, with a little message saying uh, to help with upcoming affairs. Good luck. That's from Art Christiansen. Um, Art, if that's your first name, I, I don't quite know. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, that, that kind of money, that's going to get me across Australia. Uh, it, I, it's, I'm, I'm speechless. I mean, that... It, it's so generous, thank you so much. All right, so this is Lake Cohen. Crikey. Oh, this is beautiful. I just spotted something by the side of the road and I really hope it is what I think it is. Come on! It's full! It's uh... Yeah, it's unopened. That there is a can of Heinz baked beans. And it's coming with me. Like Heinz baked beans. Result. And I was, yeah, I was literally just gonna have pasta tonight because I've got no other food. So, you know, the road provides. Amazing. I'm about to, yeah. Oh my goodness me. I rode it from the UK to Singapore. Oh, did you? So I'm riding this around the world, is the idea. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> so where did you start from? I started from Somerset, in right. southwest England. Yes. And then across Europe, across Turkey, across oh, right. Central it's Asia. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Okay, very interesting. Okie dokie, ladies and gentlemen. I have begun my Nullarbor unicycle ride. I've got about five and a half litres of water. I've got maybe seven or eight kilograms of food. I got 350 mils of petrol to cook that food. And, uh, and a big smile on my face. So I'm about to unicycle across the Nullarbor. straight. I had no idea this road was so near. I thought it was somewhere much further along the Nullarbor. Uh, but we made it and now we've got 90 miles of straight road ahead. Thank you. It's a dingo. 
He knows I'm here as well. There he is. Today is a day of wildlife. On the way back from seeing the wild dog, I just walked through a spider's web. I don't think the spider's on me. I think I can see it on the web over there. Uh, but that was a bit scary. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go check out the spider. Day two of the 90 mile straight. Uh, it's a windy one today. I'm having to really strain my body to keep this unicycle straight. This is uh, definitely one of the drawbacks of unicycle touring. Whenever the wind picks up or if you have a bad camber on the road, uh, you end up using your body in order to keep the, the bike straight. And obviously that puts, uh, that puts you in a bit of pain after a little while. You know when you're on top of a hill and you can almost lean into the wind and it will keep you upright? That's pretty much what I'm doing now. Only the wind's going across the road. I'm having to lean to the left in order to keep the, uh, the bike straight. <laughs> you all right? Uh, two months to get to Sydney. Do you have a little water? I could, I could fill up some bottles, that'd be all right. What's this coming up? I think it's a bend in the road. Well, there we are. That's the end of the 90 mile straight. Not really much to say about it. It's very similar to all the other roads out here. Just uh, no bends. Central Western time zone. Advanced clocks, 45 minutes. A couple of miles from Cocklebiddy now. Uh, we've got probably about an hour of daylight left. Uh, we'll see. I might stop at Cocklebiddy and find somewhere to put my tent. Uh, it all depends on if they have Wi-Fi or not, because I haven't been connected to the internet for like a week and a half or something. It's quite a long time. I'd quite like to get in contact with people, but all the places I've been passing through, they just don't have they just don't have internet connection. A lot of roos today. Yes. Do, do you know where I can fill up water here? Is there... I'm just in the in the toilets really because we don't have any outside taps. But it's it's safe to drink, yeah? Yeah. Cool, ideal. And do you have Wi-Fi here? No. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> that was cockle biddy, I guess. Anyway, I'm now fully stocked. I've got five and a half litres of water. Bought a frozen loaf of bread, so hopefully that, that thaws out. Um, that's about it really. I'm running out of interesting food. I ate all my cheese that I bought in Norseman. So all I've got for dinner tonight is just macaroni, uh, pasta and, and some onions I think. my kind of routine to cook my porridge and then read a bit in the morning. It's, uh, it's not really much else to do out here. Cycle, eat and, and read if you've got reading material. I, I ran out, I, I finished my book um, the other day and literally the day that I finished it I was in uh, Baladonia the next night and I met a, a British girl there and she, we swapped books. So she gave me, she gave me this one which is pretty good. Um, it's about about a kind of expedition that crossed uh, Australia. We got through the centre, so none of what I'm seeing really, even though the landscape is pretty similar. 
but they went straight through the centre with their Land Rovers. Um, so it's yeah, it's kind of interesting, and it's nice to kind of read about a place where you actually are, um, where I am. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much all there is to do out here. The commonly asked questions that people ask me out here are obviously, where are you going? Where do you come from? That's usually quite difficult to answer because they don't quite understand that I cycled from the UK. They're like, well, there's water in the way, how did you do it? Um, and also, yeah, like, how old are you? I think this seems to be quite a big one because I look quite young. I am quite young. Um, and also, are you lonely? That seems to be quite a big one recently. Um, and I, I generally just say no, but I've been thinking about it. And at the moment, yeah, I am a little bit. I haven't had I haven't had any kind of internet connection or kind of contact to the outside world for like ten days or something, and that's unusual. I mean, yeah. Well, when I was crossing Kazakhstan, it was very similar landscape to this, and obviously you couldn't find Wi-Fi anywhere. But I had a I had a SIM card and I can kind of just about connect when I wanted to. But out here, I'm just totally disconnected, which is probably why probably why I'm reading a bit more, because that's the only thing I can do. Um, but yeah, I, I am feeling a little bit lonely at the moment. It's it's quite a, it's just a massive landscape, and yeah, it, just not being in contact with the people that I like, and people back home. It's uh, yeah, it's it's starting to become a bit, a bit hard, I think. Yeah, so I guess I guess that's why I'm feeling a little bit lonely. Um, makes sense, doesn't it? That's probably why I'm speaking to a camera, because at least. At least I'm speaking to something, to, to, a, to, a, to a small group of people that care about me. Um, obviously it's delayed and it's a one-way kind of communication, but still, it, it feels like something. Um, yeah. Alright. Gonna eat my porridge and gonna get on the road. But yeah. Feeling a little bit lonely. Doesn't mean that I'm not enjoying it. Just, uh, just means it's a bit tougher at the moment. But that's alright. Take off